G'day guys, how are we all? Welcome back to episode 16. This episode we're heading up to our Double Island Point. I'll tell you a bit more about that in a second, but um, first of all, just wanna say thank you so much to everyone who's purchased our apparel. Um, we just got our new hats in, they're awesome, and they've been selling like hotcakes, so um, it means a lot to friends and family and friends we haven't even met yet that are, are buying our apparel, so thanks again we really really appreciate it but um this episode next week next Wednesday which is the 17th I think of uh, July they are putting a closure on snapper and pearl perch for a month so uh, you can't it's a no-take species for a month so the weather gods have smiled on us and uh, looks like pretty good weather this weekend so me and Sarah have decided to jump in the ranger and head to one of our favorite spots which is Double Island Point I'm gonna tow the tinny up there do a bit of surfing, filming, go up and have a look at a lighthouse and take the underwater drone, hopefully get some good footage. Um, Double Island's probably about two hours north of Brisbane. You then jump on a cable barge and head over the Noosa River to the Noosa North Shore. And then it's about a 50 kilometer run up the beach, which is awesome to Double Island Point now. Double Island Point is, uh, is sheltered from a northerly. Uh, and on the other side, you've got Rainbow Beach, which is well out of a southerly wind. So sort of got the best of the best of both worlds there the surf pumps sometimes over on the north uh, over on double island point side and there's a long right hander at rainbow so there's even a little sneaky beach there somewhere which hopefully has a few waves i'm waiting for the boss to get home i'm gonna go pack and get everything ready and then uh we're gonna we're gonna head off like a rat up a drain pipe as soon as she gets home stay tuned if this episode's even half as good as what i'm hoping it's gonna be a cracker so Keep watching. Yoink! This little thing is an absolute must when you're going camping to get the fire cranking, especially when it's been raining a bit like it has been. I'll show you how good these are soon. Long drives, gotta keep you safe. Put your arm in, come on. Good boy. You can't come, darling. It's too big of a trip for you, eh? It's too big. You get so sandy. Look at his face. Something's not right here. Something's really wrong. Oh, thank God for that. Thank God for that. All right, we've come up to the Noosa North Shore and we're gonna camp here the night. Um, we've missed the tide by about three hours, so instead of punching 50 k's through the soft sand, we're just gonna stay here the night and leave in dark in the morning and um, and head up there. So we'll see you then. It's raining now, as it always does when you go away. Uh, hopefully the weather's a bit better in the morning or else it's gonna make it a real pain in the butt. So anyway, we're gonna hit the sack and uh, up for a bit of an early rise. So see you then. Good morning. We have got up early and uh, headed up the beach. Probably about halfway up. And look at this, we stopped to make a coffee. How's that? We're about 25 k's up the beach at the moment. We left at about 5.30 in the morning. Uh, let the tires down and all that sort of stuff for it before we got on the beach, so. Got probably another half an hour to get up to where we want to be, but we're going to put the jet boil on, get a coffee going, 
get a couple of happy snaps of the sunrise and uh, go fishing. And there's swell. Surf gonna be pumping. What are you doing? You taking a photo of me, taking a photo of you? I wonder what these people are thinking. <laughs> How's the serenity? Oh my god. Hey? <laughs> How's the serenity? How's this little setup? I'm gonna do a full run through on this uh, one day. It's not the the greatest thing ever, but it's Good, does us really well. Um, got a little slide out makeshift barbecue draw here. Uh, Barbie slide straight out on that. And all our drawers and everything. But those of you who don't know what a jet boil is, this is a jet boil. Boils coffee in about two minutes. Two and a half minutes for two coffees. You get about, how many boils do you get out of that? 100 and, you should say it on there. 100 and, 100 and something boils anyway, and it was like $13, wasn't it? $17. Guys. $17, they've gone up. Turn the gas on. Give it a click. Away she goes, two and a half minutes. Better pour yours first, eh? As I was saying last night, we didn't make the tide. The tide was on its way in and <clears throat> it was going to be a long run up the soft sand. So we stayed at a unnamed place <laughs> on the way up. And uh, it was an interesting spot. We went in for a shower. Shower, what are you reckon about showers? Um, showering in uh, liquid rust? Or? Yeah. The water like actually tasted like rust didn't even want to get it in your mouth and we turned it on it was brown <laughs> paid showers <laughs> and then um sleeping was it was so weird there was like bin trucks coming at night and gas trucks coming over like proper camping ground too um people doing like 60 k's an hour like flying through the site it was yeah i got stuff all sleep i reckon did i or not was i snoring yeah you were actually snoring <laughs> Maybe but I, I didn't felt get bad sleep. about waking you up because you only just got to sleep. It took me ages to get to sleep, then just cars like non-stop in this campground at like 11.30 at night. It was weird, but anyway, I guarantee you where we stay tonight, it's going to be a lot quieter. <laughs> this is how we take the drone off when we're filming. Says he drives. Just come through the Leisha track out onto Rainbow Beach, cruising up along the 
edge of the hill here, make our way right up to the point, and then, um, what do you reckon? Put the tinny straight in, Definitely. go fishing. A few more sticks poking out than last time, but a bit of rain overnight makes it so much easier to drive in the soft sand. Not that the ranger struggles. <laughs> Rangers. Loved it. Goes good. All right, we are in the water. Well, I am. Sarah's gone to park the car, and uh, we're about to head offshore fishing. See what we can get. Come a couple of kilometers uh, off Double Island headland. First little drop, and there's not much showing, but Sarah's got a little tiny something or other. Of course, she does. Throughout the day, the wind's meant to drop. There's no wind, but it's a fair bit of swelling left over crap from last night. But um, we're just going to keep making our way north and out deeper through the day and see how we go. What's she got? Moses Birch. Little Moe. Bait, you reckon? Just found a little bit of fish on the sounder on the way up to one of the marks and had a drop. And she's on again. Look something here on the uh, the gobbler's lure, white magic. And the six inch. Nothing massive, but. So pearly on the little gobbler. Double hook up here. Oh. Got a double hook up here. Says he's behind the camera there. Oh, nice curly. Another one. Little lure's gone off again. You're loving that white magic. Oh. Someone's a bit crook here in the background. <laughs> You're right, mate. Woohoo! <laughs> Look at that. Rigged up like a live. You ready to put back down? You crook? No. <laughs> oh, it's you hangover. Poor bugger. Last time she tried to blame it on a hangover. Then there's no hangover this time. It's only second time, eh? Yeah, Seasick's right. a funny thing, eh? Sometimes you can be out in really rough, like we went out in the cat a while ago, and it was rough as, eh? Yeah, she she didn't get crook. We're straight out to the swell here rather than um, in the bay. Yeah. And getting used to my sea legs, it's like bang, swell. Yeah. See how long she lasts. And we might have to go in a bit earlier. <laughs> Outlast me. That gobbler's lure again. <laughs> Plastics are out fishing the bloody bait today. It's our last one we just got. Oh, he's not happy. Today he's about 42. And uh, they are the best eating fish in the ocean, in my opinion, except for coral trout. Toss up between coral trout and pearlies. All right, we've uh, come about 17 kilometers east of Double Island now, just looking for some ground. Oh, this sound up. Well, the, set, the sound is great. Transduce is no good. It's just one of those three in one ones. And I can't sound any quicker than that at four knots. It's very frustrating. Anyway, spend a little time sanding around, see if we can find some fish or bait or whatever. It's just semi good. What percentage are you up to now? 70. 70. Yeah. And what percentage do you have a beer? Some of the local wildlife about to turn up. Have a look at this. Whee! Hello, boy!
that? Seen that little pod of dolphins? Here they come. They won't leave us alone now. <laughs> yeah, mate, it's a drone, an underwater one. They put the drone down with them and had a swim. That was awesome. Look at him. Oh, that's cool. Anyway, let's go get some fish. Oh, we've come back in where we were getting some pearlies earlier. And I think, by the looks of it, there's snapper on the bottom. So, oh. we got, ah, oh, it's pearly. Not a bad pearly, but. So I'm using a snood rig with some PE tackle, BFG hooks, sharp as. Oh, she got a little squirrel. Bell hook, little squire. Beauty. I'll drop down a gobbler's lure. <laughs> in the four inch in the live bait colour. Leaving a dead stick in the rod holder and they're getting smashed. Rodney, best fisherman in the world. He's engulfed that lure. Look at that plastic. Way down there. Heaps of pearlies down there. I might drop the drone down in a sec and have a look. What do you reckon? Oh, oh hang on. And she's onto one. Not crook anymore. <laughs> 42 metres. Oh, here we go. On the bottom. Big rock down there. Oh, really? Yeah. Below the hang. Angelfish. I've dropped down to see what's down there. I've been getting um, pearlies off this and I've found a little red. I don't know, it looks maybe 45 or 50 centimetres. They're not shy. There's some bigger fish on there too. There's some fish coming up. Here. Oh, what is that? Oh. Pearlies. Oh my god. Oh. Oh. It's loaded with pearlies. Really? Nanny guy. Reds. What is this big thing here? Oh, massive cod. Really? Coral trout. <gasps> I've got a massive coral trout right in front I'm of me. Putting it on my phone so I can watch it too. Oh my. I want to see this. Oh my god. So that is probably the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. We're literally fishing straight on top of this rock that's got massive trout, a red, pearlies to the yin yang, snapper. What else is down there? Tuskies, cod, moeys, a couple of spangled emperor, and the only thing biting the pearlies. All right, so after seeing that massive trout down there, I dropped the live bait jig. Got Sarah a livey. <laughs> She's got it down there. Then I dropped this live bait jig. It's just got absolutely hammered. 
It's coming up now, all right, whatever it is. <laughs> Something smashed that livey. A nanny! Yeah We've seen a few of them on there. <laughs> Good, about those. Good girl! They were nannies! You beauty! He's a good one! Whoa, 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 whoa. This is a... Uh... Jesus. This thing just took that livey, whatever it is. What is it? Fish. Oh, sh Whoa. Oh, plastic. Oh. Get it out. Oh, nice. We're in all sorts here. Oh, nice. Oh, that plastic. Big cobia. Oh, Hey. Hey. Yeah. Oh, not a big cobia, but just, whoa. Still got him? Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh man. Chaos. Oh. Oh. How's that treating you? <laughs> Hard enough to get it out of the road. Oh, oh that was insane. Wayne, your lures are working a treat, mate. Absolute treat. Here we go, get a bit more on him, I'll pull him up. Whoa, whoa, he's going again. He's not happy, Jan. This fella forward enough to go back in, I reckon. Yep. Plus, we don't have enough room in the esky for him, so. Anyway, go see you, mate. <laughs> Your power. All right, we're back. Made it out. These little guides, these new guides that I've put on. That there, the easy on. Guides it on perfect every time. Alright, so this is the bry I was talking about. Um, we've got the camp right at home, which is probably twice the size of this. It fits like about 50,000 chicken wings or heap of steaks or whatever on there. This one fits four toasties or whatever you want to cook. So today we're cooking some pork. Alright, so what it does is you get this with it. Okay, so this sits in the sand or over the coals or whatever, this frame. This just slots in there. And just cooks. This one sits on the top like that, so it's pretty easy. There's also two bits on the side here. You can hang the bry over, and you can put it next to the fire like that, and everything slow roasts in there. So, or if you get a camp oven, whatever it is, 
camp oven, your billy, whatever on there, and the fire will just heat it all up. They're awesome. So we've used the travel bry, no, the camp bry. We've used the camp bry heaps on the fire at home. You would have seen it on Instagram and stuff. And this is good just to chuck in the ute and take around, so it weighs stuff all. What I'm gonna do, stop talking, start cooking. Easy, ready? Olive oil, salt. Everyone stole all the catchphrases about that much and we got fire baby and... Yeah, I don't know. Come up with one. Send me some catchphrases. There's one. <laughs> Magic ingredient. Smoky rub. Whack him on that. And don't be shy. Mix them all around. On a trip like this, coming up north to a place like Double Island Point, if you got a boat or whatever, even when we where we launched the uh, tinny in in the little um, in the little backwater there, there's heaps of whiting. Like there was whiting this big just behind the boat when I was putting it in. You don't even need to bring food. <laughs> you actually don't. So anyway, what it's here. This pulls out. It sits up on top of my fridge. These get laid. In here, the surf is in the background whispering sweet nothings. Alright, now this comes back into it, sandwiches down on everything, slides over, bang, straight over the fire. How good is that? Then on the bigger one, so you'd have heaps of spare room around. You can sit veggies and everything the whole way around it. And <laughs> seriously, it's gold. I probably will never bring my my um, swing over barbecue plate again. So if anyone is interested in the camp bry or the travel bry, we'll drop a link in the description below. All right, and get onto them. All right, we've got the pork spare ribs on. All you do is just grab it when you want. Flip it. That's it. How yeah, good does that look? Amazing. So there you go. That's it. Look at that. Yum. Oh. All right. There's one last thing, and then uh, we're going to hit the sack and show you how we have a shower out on the beach. Uh, it's a Julka hot tap. Now, obviously. Just got a little, I made up a little thing here. She just slides out on two fridge slides. I hooked the hoses up previously, but black one goes straight to a little gas bottle. Blue one goes to my water tank up here that I've got under the ranger. And the red one just goes to this. So you just, all you gotta do is open the tap over the other side in the water tank. That sparks up. 30, the heat will kick in, here we go, and you have got hot water, goes up to 57 degrees, so I just have it set on 43, and that is toasty. What we do is we just stand in this bucket, and we have a shower, and all the warm water drips down into that, and all you do is rinse your feet dry them, put them straight into a pair of Ugg boots. And then you set. Then you can walk around all night, not get sandy feet, jump up in your bed. No sand in the bed, that's my pet hate. So that's what we do. And it works good, eh? Sure does. <laughs> <laughs> you already having your shower. Yeah. Oh my God. Steamy hot. Is it really? Oh yeah. Ah! It's nearly too hot. Jesus. So out of my 60 litre water tank under there, we get about nine minutes worth of showers. So if you just quickly rinse yourself and then soak yourself up, then 
rinse yourself again, you get about however many showers. But if you like Sarah, then sit in the shower for an hour and a half. Probably only get one. Three your trackies and into an Ugg boot. Oh my god. You taught me this trick. <laughs> Flick this one. Dry this foot. I'm pretty fussy, eh, with sand. I can't sleep with sand in my bed. Oh, sand no. can be wherever else, I don't care. Not in my bed. Well, there's trouble. And that's it. So there you go, Jolka. Hot tap. Hot showers, feeling fresh. Time for a wine. Sit around by the fire. We've worked, we've worked hard today, eh? Mm. Poor thing's been seasick half the day. Fished all day. It's been a good day, but we've got some awesome footage. They're gonna relax next to the fire now. Maybe jump up in the camper, watch a bit of Netflix, get up early and do it all again. <laughs> so, as we do. Yep. See you in the morning. <laughs> My head torch was there. See you in the morning. without knowing what's down there at Wolf Rock. So we put the tinny in, we're just coming around the little spit here at Rainbow. Great little spot to put the boat in just behind there. It's gonna be a bit of a bumpy trip out, so uh, we'll see you out there. All right, so this behind me is Wolf Rock. Uh, it's a green zone, so it's closed to fishing, but you're allowed to dive and scuba dive and everything around it, so. Uh, I'm gonna put the drone down and see what's around here.
right, well, that's it. We've got some awesome footage of uh, Wolf Rock, but uh, we want to make that high tide. Uh, we want to make the low tide. If we wait too long, we're going to do 60 k's through the soft sand. So anyway, I'm going to head out for a wave. Hope everyone's enjoyed this episode. It's been a little bit of hard work, but um, I reckon it's going to turn out well. Thanks for watching, and I'll uh, see you again soon. If you enjoyed this episode and are keen to see more, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel and check us out on Facebook and Instagram.